if there is a planet which is going around the sun or a satellite which is going around a planet then if I disturb the system is it possible for the planet or the satellite to start oscillating about its orbit hi everyone I'm Divya Jyoti Das welcome back to my channel in this video I'm going to discuss this particular question so I'm going to try to answer this question but most importantly I'm going to discuss the nature of stability for planetary motion in gravitational field so for that let's first write down the expression of total energy for this kind of a system so if we have some sort of an ideal system where the mass of the star is very very large and the mass of the planet is very less in that kind of a situation the total energy of that particular system is simply given by the sum of the kinetic energy and the potential energy so the kinetic energy is given by half mv square and the potential energy is some function of r because gravitational force is a central force therefore angular momentum of a system experiencing this kind of a force remains constant which simply means that the planetary motion happens in a plane because of conservation of angular momentum the motion of a planet around the sun is restricted to a plane which means that if I want to represent velocity velocity can be expressed simply in polar coordinates as v square is equal to vr square plus v theta square where vr square is what r dot the radial velocity square plus v theta which is r theta dot the transverse velocity square so here I can write m r dot square plus half m r square theta dot square and because v r represents the gravitational potential energy this can be written something as like minus k upon r where k is a constant and 1 by r represents the nature of gravitational potential energy because the gravitational force is an inverse square force the potential energy corresponding to it comes out to be minus 1 upon r multiplied by some constant so if i can simplify this expression then this will look something like half m r dot square plus now what is theta dot theta dot essentially represents the sort of angular velocity here I can make use of the concept that angular momentum is conserved as I just now told you what is angular momentum let us represent this with L so L is equal to m r square omega or theta dot this is a very simple expression that comes from the definition of angular momentum if L is equal to r cross p and p is equal to mv then from there I can easily obtain L is equal to m r square theta dot which simply means that theta dot is equal to L upon mr square here L of course is a constant okay we have to keep this in mind that L is a constant so if I plug this into this particular expression it simply becomes half mr square theta dot square simply becomes L square upon m square r to the power 4 minus k upon r and this finally becomes half mr dot square plus L square upon 2 m r square minus k upon r now if you look at this particular expression then the first term here the first term essentially contains r dot which is you can say the radial speed and these two expressions contain r so this is a function of r basically so we can say that the total energy of this kind of a system where a planet is revolving around the sun or a satellite is going around some kind of a planetary body e is equal to half m r dot square plus some kind of a v effective okay so this because l is a constant the only variable here is r then i'm going to call this term as v effective so where v effective is simply equal to l square upon 2 m r square minus k upon r the beauty of this kind of an expression is that we can do a lot of analysis just by understanding this expression for example what kind of orbits are possible because if I plot v effective which is basically a function of r that is a radial distance then this kind of a plot looks something like this all right for some sort of a planetary motion if I calculate v effective where l is the angular momentum k is of course a constant that depends upon gravitational constant masses of the planet and the star etc r is the distance between the planet and the sun then this kind of a function with respect to r looks something like this that means it decreases goes towards negative value reaches a minimum and increases but remains negative as r tends to infinity by doing an analysis of this kind of a v effective potential energy diagram we can conclude a lot about the nature of different kinds of planetary orbits i'm going to restrict my discussion to circular orbits now what is a circular orbit circular orbit is an orbit in which the radius 
of the planetary motion from the sun remains a constant because as you know most kinds of planetary orbits are elliptical in nature where the radius or the distance between the sun and the planet might vary a little bit depending upon the eccentricity of that particular system but circular orbit is a very unique orbit in which the radius remains a constant so if the radius of a circular orbit remains a constant it simply means that the total energy of the system expression will be reduced to because r dot is essentially equal to zero for a circular orbit this goes to zero so essentially the total energy of this kind of a system e is equal to nothing but v effective where v effective is basically this particular point the minimum value of energy or the minimum energy of the system that is possible for a circular orbit so it is clear from this expression as well as this particular expression if you analyze it if a particle or some kind of a planet is existing in any kind of a uh, setup then if the particle is somewhere here by particle i mean the planet if the particle has an energy so that the particle has the lowest kind of energy that is possible it simply means that the radial distance from the sun will remain a constant now there are of course other possibilities if the particle has an energy let's suppose negative but greater than the minimum value of v effective somewhere here in that situation the nature of the orbit will be elliptical in nature the maximum distance from the sun will be this minimum distance from the sun will be this if let's suppose the system has an energy equal to zero then the nature of the orbit will be a parabola if the system has an energy greater than zero then the nature of the orbit will be a hyperbola it would be wrong to say orbit because parabolas and hyperbolas are unbounded kind of an orbit something comes from the infinity and goes back again to infinity but a very unique result of this situation is that whenever the planetary system has an amount of energy which is the minimum possible value that means it is lying at the lowest possible point which is equal to the v effective minimum there the radius is a constant it means we end up getting a circular orbit now if you have watched my previous video where we talked about the minima of a potential and how if we disturb a system from its minima then it starts executing simple harmonic oscillations then can we use that concept from that video in this particular question in fact yes we can so what if we somehow perturb the system so that the system has some displacement from the equilibrium then we will see that we end up getting some kind of an oscillation about this minimum value of effective potential energy and these oscillations will simply represent some sort of an oscillation in that particular orbit where the radius is slightly increasing and decreasing in some sort of a manner now to show that analysis mathematically first i'm going to do a derivative of v effective to obtain that particular value of r naught where this minimum potential energy expression lies and then I'm going to obtain the second order derivative to get an idea about what is the frequency and the time period of such kind of oscillations. If I disturb the system so that the planet starts going in such a manner that it starts oscillating about its radial distance from the sun. So if these kind of oscillations starts happening, if we can sufficiently produce that kind of a perturbation, theoretically speaking, then what would be the nature of those oscillations? What would be the time period and the angular frequency corresponding to those oscillations for that? We will need to do a potential energy analysis of this particular expression. So let's do that. So the first step of doing this kind of a potential energy analysis is to find out the derivative of this V effective that I've taken with respect to R and making it equal to zero. So if we do this, then the expression yields V effective is, is essentially equal to L square upon 2M R square minus K upon R is equal to zero. This kind of an analysis will simply give me minus 2L square upon 2m r cube minus plus k r square is equal to 0 and from here basically I will get the radius of the circular orbit essentially so if I represent this as k upon r square is equal to l square upon m r cube this simply gives me the radius of the circular orbit which is r is equal to l square upon m k. So since circular orbits are those orbits for which the total energy of system is exactly equal to the minimum possible 
a value of the effective potential the mathematical analysis simply gives us that the radius of a circular orbit for a planet orbiting around the sun will be given by this particular expression where l is the angular momentum m is the mass of the planet and k is basically the constant that i've written here in terms of the potential energy expression now this simply gives us the nature of the orbit but what about the nature of the oscillations to find out the nature of the oscillations i need to go one step further and find out the second order derivative of this kind of an expression so i'm interested in finding out d2 v effective upon dr2 at basically r is equal to the radius of the orbit so if this is so if this is the radius of the orbit then for r is equal to l square upon mk expression so what is this going to be let us find out what is this expression because that will help us in getting us an idea about the time period of such oscillations so this can be written as d upon dr so this is the first uh, derivative of this particular expression so i can use this expression here so this is basically going to give me minus l square upon m r cube and plus k upon r square so let us just obtain this expression here so this becomes minus 3 l square upon m r to the power 4 minus 2 k here i should i think it's a plus and this is minus 2 k upon uh, r cube so if i plug in this value of the radius of a circular orbit in this expression then i should get something which simplifies to 3 L square upon m and r is equal to L square upon m k, so L square upon m k to the power four minus two k again L square upon m k to the power three. This simplifies to three m cube k to the power four upon L to the power eight minus two, so L to the power six minus two. m cube k to the power 4 upon l to the power 6 so essentially 3 minus 2 this comes out to be m cube k to the power 4 l to the power 6 now you might ask what is the importance of this particular expression i have already made a video analyzing potential minimas and how a uh, disturbing system from its potential minima gives rise to simple harmonic oscillations and this can be done by expanding the nature of the potential energy expression in a taylor series function and then coming up with an expression of the potential energy expression for small oscillations so in my last video if you check out my last video there i showed that any kind of a potential function vr if we can expand in the form of a taylor series expansion around the minima i can sufficiently uh, for small oscillations approximate it to a harmonic oscillator of the form half k r square where k is nothing but this particular expression which is the second order derivative of this kind of potential uh, around the minima r square so essentially what we have done is we have come up with this particular expression so this is for any kind of potential for our case if we are able to successfully disturb the system from its equilibrium for a circular orbit then uh, the system will start behaving like a harmonic oscillator that executes simple harmonic oscillations where the oscillations will have some kind of a, uh, what you can say force constant so i should make a distinction between this k which is basically the gravitational constant arising from the product of g and m etc and this particular k which is the force constant for a harmonic oscillator so let's say that this k is something like a, a capital k okay just to make a distinction a capital k i am making it here so for our case the capital k is equal to this particular expression which is d 2 v effective upon dr2 at r is equal to this much at the radius of the circular orbit which comes out to be how much this is the expression that i have got m square k to the power 4 l to the power 6 by the way this is not the angular frequency of revolution all right i'm not talking about the revolution of the planet around the sun i'm only talking about these perturbations that lead to some sort of a oscillation about its radial distance from the sun and the frequency associated with that so omega is equal to k upon 
m with the square root term here. So this basically comes out to be, if I write down this expression, so there should be an m cube term here. Okay, so this is an m cube k to the power four upon l to the power six. So there is an m cube term here. So m and m cube gets cancelled. You end up getting an m square. So this is an expression that looks like m k square upon l cube. So this is the angular frequency of those oscillations and the time period can simply be calculated from here that t is equal to 2 pi upon omega so this is equal to 2 pi l cube upon m k square so this is a time period of such kind of oscillations uh, about this orbit where l is the angular momentum m is the mass of the planet and k is the constant arising from the potential energy or the gravitation potential energy of the system. So this is it. That is what I wanted to discuss today. If we are somehow theoretically at least capable of disturbing some kind of a planetary system uh, from its circular stable orbit, then we should get some sort of an oscillation about its minima where the angular frequency and the time period can be calculated by doing this kind of a potential energy analysis. So I hope you enjoyed the video. That is all for today. Thank you so much. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.